Sex workers taught me how to organize my home community. At 24, I moved back home to Memphis, Tennessee, very, very excited to change the world. I knew that single-handedly, I was the person that could show up and fix any issue. My textbook knowledge equipped me to handle social injustices, to be able to look at social ills with a very, very thoughtful eye to come up with any solution needed. And then I was humbled. <laughs> the social ills were way bigger than what I ever anticipated. The issues that plagued my community were things that we never even talked about in my classes. So at 24, with my Ivy League education from the University of Pennsylvania, I moved back home to Memphis, Tennessee to have walls. And I didn't really know what to do. But I knew at 24 that the responsibility and really the opportunity existed for me to be able to serve. So I went back into my memory banks to an experience actually that happened a year prior at 23, when I was able to do research with the Durbar Institute in Calcutta, India. And when I got on the plane right before, um, when they were interviewing us and letting us know about the opportunity, they told us that we would be working with a sex workers union. I was like, I'm just going to India, <laughs> so this is exciting. Uh, we'll figure out what that means when we get there. And so when I got to Calcutta, India, I was really, 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 really inspired by the women and their struggles, and more importantly, their solutions. You can imagine going into a bank, saying that you are a sex worker is your profession, you don't get the loan. And when your kids go to school, they get teased. And at every layer of your life, there's some type of disenfranchisement. And so this mass of women decided to form their own union, to create their own schools, and to create their own bank, which is actually what I was there to do. I wasn't there to change their minds about their profession, to give them any type of advice on anything. I was there to measure client satisfaction with their bank. They had had their bank in existence for well over 10 years. And so we were there as researchers to be able to figure out things that were working and outcomes that had come over the 10 years of them um, having a very unique collection model. They would take sons and daughters of sex workers and use them as runners to go from the brothels to the bank. So the women, they weren't accustomed to saving they hadn't come from generations of fiscal savviness to be able to um, make any type of dedication to being um, wealth builders, but their belief in small things adding up made all the difference. Our study showed that over time, these women were able to progress out of their professions into new ventures and actually turn into entrepreneurs and become brothel owners. So over the time of them just trusting the process every day, trusting the process, sending small nominal amounts to their bank, they were able to accumulate funds that actually was life altering for them. So come back to me at 24 in historic Orange Mound, the oldest black community in the city of Memphis. With the issues that I was facing, I remembered that. And I'm like, hmm, I think we can do something here. Spare change, everybody has it, right? You've already seen that it adds up. And so we began to collect spare change. I started the nonprofit Juice Orange Mount in 2016, and we did our very first collection in 2017. With 30 volunteers and two hours, we went to a third of the community and we collected, asking neighbors for their spare change. And guess what? They gave it excitingly, a little, you know, confused about what was going on, but still, spare change was coming. Spare change came from elders. Spare change came from high school students. Spare change came from people who identified in the moment as being addicted to different substances. Spare change came from prostitutes. Spare change literally in my community came from every corner of the community. It didn't disenfranchise. And so we collected that spare change and we were able to accumulate $592 in spare change, nominal gifts to the organization with the belief that we would be able to do something with it. 
Now you're thinking $592, it doesn't really sound like a lot, but we have over 3,500 parcels in my community. And if every house gives $5, every quarterly collection, we can raise over $15,000. Now, if you're a nonprofit leader like me, you know that a $60,000 guarantee in your bank account annually can make a difference. And if you're a nonprofit like me, then you know how to work it. That 60 can easily turn to 120 with a little leverage going to other players to ask them to match and then asking those players to match, right? You can grow this amount into whatever it is that you need it to be to serve your community. At 23, if I had a closed mind, I would have missed out on one of the greatest lessons that I've ever learned. Undeniably, sex workers taught me how to organize my home community and are continuing to equip me with a methodology to be able to make change. So to everyone listening, my hope for you is that you will open your hearts and open your minds to be able to make change in your lives. Thank you.